when you get an erection, we would take you to the room. Um, you make you lay down, lay on the bed face down in a pillow. My name is Peter. Uh, I was originally from the Northern Cape. I grew up on a farm, actually, um, a sheep farm close to a town called Kenard. Uh, my parents, unfortunately, was living in town due to work, um, so I had to go to the farm and grow up with my grandparents there. Um, at a later stage, things started to change. I had to go to school. Um, and with both parents working, we went to live in a hostel. Living in a hostel was a different animal all on its own. Um, you had to develop social skills to be able to um, function in that type of scenario. Um, so yeah, in growing up in the early childhood era was, was mostly good. So my father was an interesting figure. Um, I myself um, saw him on more than one occasion physically assaulting my mother. Uh, but the verbal abuse that he laid upon my mother was worse than on us. Now that put my mother in a situation where she did not know what to do. She tried to survive from day to day. So we didn't get any protection from her side because she was in a survival struggle herself. Uh, he would switch from the verbal abuse to massaging our testicles in front of his friends. Um, and they would sit there and have a big laugh about this because in my mind, obviously, they did the same to their kids. And when you reach a certain age, you, you go through a bio biological process. So when someone starts playing with your testicles, you start to get an erection. Then my father would actually beat us because he said, we are, we are doing something wrong. This is not how you're supposed to be. You, I must play with your eggs and you must stay quiet about it. And when you get an erection, we would take you to the room. Um, you make you lay down, lay on the bed face down in a pillow and he would give you six shots with his belt. You never knew when it came, he didn't, he didn't make it get over quickly. He would try and stretch out that experience as far as possible. Since the age of around about four years old, my, my reality was a bit bent. Um, under this facade of growing up happily, uh, it was all shattered when my brothers, I have two brothers, and they both started to um, make sexual advances towards me when I was basically four or five years old. At one stage, my brothers, I started approaching the subject of, um, of trying to see whether at my age um, I could actually do the whole ejaculation thing. And they groomed me for a couple of weeks before, subtly making comments and saying this and saying that, up until the point where I would allow them one evening to play with me up until the point where I reached the orgasm so that I could see, they could see, whether I could ejaculate at five years of age, which obviously could not happen. In 
It was a summer evening. I remember because it's extremely hot in the Northern Cape, so you don't really use covers. You just some lie on top of the blankets and everything because it's too hot and the mosquitoes would drive you crazy. But I was lying on my bed and earlier that day, my brothers would come to me and say, but listen, tonight we want to come and test to see if you are a man. We want to see if you can go ahead and be a man in the world and make a woman happy. And to be honest, I didn't like the idea at all because it intruded and it's a natural reaction to feel adverse to intrusion of any kind. But I think the sense of, um, of trying to please my brothers and what they wanted to achieve was more intense. So I allowed them. Um, they would wait up until the point where my parents were fully asleep and they approached my bed and I was thinking about how to let this happen and I decided to, um, to pretend to be asleep. So I closed my eyes, one of, one of my two brothers would pull my pants down and to st started to play with my penis until I got the erection. Um, I don't know how, but one of them lubricated me and then they started to play. It was hurtful, it was excessively shameful. Um, I didn't want to cry though, or well, I, I didn't cry though, I wanted to because I was supposed to be a man. This was a test of manhood. I still to this day wake up in the evening hearing those breaths. It was just a terrible thing for a five-year-old to go through. What they said was um, that I'm available for anybody to have sex with. I, I'm standing there waiting, people can just go and do what they want to do. So my oldest brother went to the army. He was actually one of the last groups of kids that was forced to go to the army. Um, so he went there and he would stay away from home uh, four months, three months, four months at a time. Would come home to visit once, oh yeah, once the, the three months was passed for a weekend and then he would have to go back. Now in those pieces that he visited um, home, it usually fell in the holidays. So we were all back on the farm, all in a close knit house environment and he would start to um, introducing me to, to pornography videos books written books and magazines and all different kinds of material he were, we were sitting there paging through these magazines then he said that he wanted to perform oral, oral sex on me and I had to do the same to him now at that stage, um, we have been discussing sex and oral sex and all different kinds of things um, to an extent where I thought, well, we've talked about it, so let's do it. Um, he, did not, he didn't force me physically, but he prepared me mentally for a very long time before the act happened. Um, so he did what he wanted, and I did. Uh, I performed oral sex on him as well. Um, and the following evening, he suggested that we take our um, sleeping bags and sleep outside on the lawn. And he brought a couple of his magazines, and we would page through them and talk about whatever was happening on the exact page. Um, and then he said that uh, now it's time to physically have sex. 
So that was the evening that he raped me. Um, now he was a lot stronger than I was because they did the physical training in the army. Um, in the beginning, I allowed it, but I wanted it to stop at some stage because it, it hurt really, really bad. And then he, he forced himself onward until he reached his climax. Um, he then offered that I could do the same to him and then I declined. I said, no, I don't want to do this because it hurt too much. Um, and I think, I think I broke down at that point. I didn't care anymore. I didn't feel anything. I didn't want to experience and live in this shameful thing any longer. After, after the rape incident with my brother happened, uh, I went back to school and tried to be as normal as possible um, and tried to appear that nothing really seriously has happened, um, which obviously failed because at, at that stage, some new kids from, um, from another country came and moved to the school because it was an agricultural school. So they came for the, uh, for the opportunity to learn there. Now, these boys, there were three of them, they obviously picked up something was wrong with me as a person. So they would, at, at, after getting to know me a bit better, start to slowly but surely um, try to groom me in a new direction. Um, they would pass hints of, of me being a homosexual. They would pass hints of me being a lesser man. Um, they would physically attack me at, sometimes, but mostly they would try to um, humiliate me in front of as much people as possible. Um, I think the reason why they did this was so that they could break down the little resistance that I had in my own personality. Um, to such a point where they could actually manipulate me into doing anything that they wanted to do, which they did. Um, it came to a point one afternoon where they had broken me down so badly that they suggested that we go and have group sex with me on the receiving end. Um, so after the study period we had each day, we went up to their room. They all, the three of them slept in one room and uh, they would then ask me to start undressing and dancing and all kinds of weird things. Um, and they would stand in the corner with big smiles on their faces, um, which I saw at that stage as anticipation. Um, what I felt at that point of time was uh, I really did not care anymore. Um, let be what will be, and let do what will do, and just get on with it. Um, one of them gave me a vial of Vaseline to lubricate myself because they then wanted to make turns um, in having sex with me. So I was standing there butt naked, um, well lubricated for the act that was about to come. And just as they asked me to bend over a chair and they wanted, so, so that they can start with the whole process, they all burst out laughing. <laughs> and they ran out of the room and they started telling everybody that they can see exactly what state I am in, um, what, I'm star what I'm standing there doing, uh, what they planned or what they, what they said was, um, that I'm available for anybody to have sex with. I, I'm standing there waiting. People can just go and do what they want to do. 
So, I actually burst out in tears then, got dressed, went to take a very, very hot shower because that was probably the dirtiest I felt in my whole life. The teachers in that specific school chose to ignore everything that was said. The, um, the person in charge of the hostel um, came to me and said that um, I must keep my homosexual tendencies to myself, which never was the case. Um, and even the, um, the pastor chased me out of church one day because I wasn't allowed there anymore. And I think that was the point in my life where I decided that if anybody was ever going to come close to me again, then I'm going to jail for murder. And that almost happened once. Um, at a very much later stage in my life, I almost beat a guy to death for coming too close to what I thought was personal. My immediate family, my wife and kids, would live on the edge day by day because they never knew what's going to come next. When I finally left school, um, um, so I, I fell for some reason into the restaurant business where I actually did considerably well. Um, I developed a way of speaking with people without them noticing in the background what was happening. Um, then finally I landed up in a town called Posmasberg. I met my wife there. Um, later we got married and we, we had kids. But the year-on-year -year problem continued for a while, um, which meant that I could not build up any sustainability in my, in my married life. Um, the, all, all the time when, when my, my adult life and my married life started to grow and to develop into something permanent. In the back of my mind, I was haunted every night um, about what happened in my childhood. Um, I'm 40 years old currently. By the age of 35 years old, I started developing severe depression. Um, I would have mood swings like nothing else. Um, my 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 immediate family, my wife and kids, would live on the edge day by day because they never knew what's going to come next. What, when, when am I going to go into a rage fit again? Um, I would be happy for five minutes and then I would be fighting with everyone ten minutes later. Now, I was sitting in my house one day I was watching a movie, I cannot remember which movie it was, and I burst out in tears and started crying like a baby. That was the point when I realized I needed help. I had a huge problem that needed to be fixed, and I cannot do it alone. So what I did was I went onto the internet and I started researching male sexual abuse, which I actually did not know existed. Um, and there were a, a couple of groups and contact points that, uh, that came up. Unfortunately, not in South Africa. Most of these were abroad. Now, in that specific part of my life, I had a friend that went through a badly narcissistic scenario. 
and he spoke previously with uh, a guy called Martin. Now Martin is the leader of a group named Matrix Men. Now Matrix Men is a is a group of male sexual abusers of survivors. It's guys that went through similar experiences that I did and they share what happened to them in a group se setup where you can then basically either go and listen or share your own experience. And we sat, sat there and we just touched on what I wanted to tell him about what happened to me. And all he did was listen. And that is all that you need.